Today we are talking about a UPS or a uninterrupted power supply. Let's talk about it right now. So my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And we are talking about an uninterrupted power supply or commonly known as a UPS in the IT industry. We're gonna talk about what it is, what it does, what its purpose is, and we're gonna cover that right here. This is a rack mounted UPS. This is something that you would be using in a server room. Uh, and it's rack mounted because it is attached here to some rails and is inside of a rack server cabinet. Now really the whole point of a UPS is to hold power to devices so that in the event of a power outage, you don't lose those devices, whether it be servers, etc. In the scenario here, uh, this is powering up servers and switches and firewalls, those sort of things. And it's a longer rack based unit. UPSs do come in various shapes and sizes and capacities. Some can be just stood up. Normally they can be used at home, they can be used in businesses. Uh, the more, the bigger UPS is generally going to be uh, this sort of longer sort of setup and design, uh, mainly to make the most of the uh, available space that I have in a rack. All right, but this is really just a rack base, it's powered up. Uh, on the front, there's a few things there. The whole point of the UPS is really just to keep the power on uh, to your devices, essentially your servers, your switches, your routers, uh, and provide a backup source in case the mains power goes out, your UPS takes over, and then all your devices will stay online. Uh, so obviously showing you the, uh, the hertz that are being used, the output, the battery power, etc., etc. So here you've got another example of another UPS, very similar. It's got a nice LED indicator on the front telling me that the load on this particular UPS is 27% and the battery power is currently at 100%. So if this was activated, uh, it would start to decrease, that 100% will start to go down to let me know uh, the battery itself. Some little indicators on the top to let me know the health of the unit, what it's currently doing. And then I've got some buttons on the bottom where I can run some diagnostics, some tests. I can ensure that the unit is running uh, as, as needed by navigating different sorts of options on the UPS itself. This UPS is configurable. So on the back, there is a ethernet port running into it, which we'll have a look in a second, uh, where I can actually access this UPS from a web browser and actually see the health, see what's going on, uh, see what's been triggered the load, all those sort of things, right from the web browser. So this UPS, if we were to open it up, it is just full of batteries, uh, different sorts of technologies, depending on the UPS that you get. This UPS, as I said, is just full of batteries, which are then charged. The batteries themselves uh, obviously have a limited lifespan. So it's very common that once the batteries are, are depleted or running low, you may not even have to replace the UPS. It's generally good practice to replace the UPS, but in some cases you could just potentially open it up and just replace the batteries and then you're good to go. But as I said, it's generally good practice to look at replacing the UPS when the UPS is end of life or out of warranty. So obviously when you are configuring or buying or looking at purchasing a UPS, you want to ensure that the UPS is gonna be able to provide sufficient amount of power to be able to power everything. Uh, you don't wanna buy UPS plug it all up, think you're all good to go, and then in a scenario where you lose power, you don't get actually any power out of it, or it depletes, this battery goes down straight away. You wanna be able to purchase this and have the assurity that in the event of a power outage, your UPS can power everything and can power everything long enough to either restore operations or to be able to safely power down your infrastructure in a timely fashion. I've got some ethernet cables running into these and these are for management. So I can actually remotely log in to my UPS and see what is going on. I can remotely power it on, restart it, test it, uh, give it a proper name, do a whole bunch of other things. I can set it up for monitoring uh, so that if I have a monitoring piece of equipment, some software, I can know the health and the state of my UPS. You see at the top there, we've got our mains power out. You'll see that they are generally larger because you need more grunt to be able to run through your particular cabinet. So here we've got the back of a UPS. You've got the mains power running into here, providing power into your UPS. And then you've got the output right here, which is running into the PDU. 
and then in turn the PDU has all of the devices running into it. Here we got a uh, rack PDU. This is a APC rack PDU. Uh, you'll see that I've got these nicely color coordinated. So you've got all your switches, your, your firewalls, your, your servers, etc., running one into the red, one into the blue, left and right power uh, for redundancy. And then of course that PDU being powered uh, providing the power through the UPS, which is then in turn connected to the mains power. So in the event that the mains power goes out, uh, this will stay powered on because then it will take on the battery from the UPS itself. But that is really it in a nutshell. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, and also click on that notification little bell so that you can keep up to date with my release of videos. And also like this video if you did find it helpful, comment below, and we'll see you next time.